Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of ReaperCast. Today I wanted to talk about a few new cards here, or rather cards that aren't actually focused in Battle of Chaos. So with that being said, it's going to be very exciting to talk about each of these different cards coming out from different places. We have some promos here, and we also have some very interesting support as well regarding Kaiba. But before I get started, I would like to remind you guys to consider dropping a like, share, comment, or subscribe if you enjoyed this kind of content. But with that being said, let's get started. So the first card we have here is completely secret. It has no effects revealed. However, it is a new V-Jump promo, and I just thought that I'd bring the attention of this card to you guys, because it is definitely going to be, uh, I guess, synergetic with Dark Magician, which is supposed to be in honor of the 25th anniversary, which, I mean, I guess that's nice. Though I did wish a bigger event was actually being presented for this, though even so, it is a very awesome card. I love the artwork already. It's kind of like the counterpart to Dark Magician himself, being that this one's more of like a white magician, though its name is called Chronicle Magician, a level 7 dark spellcaster effect monster, so we just have to wait until the effects get revealed. But given that this is a V-Jump promo, we obviously gotta wait until it comes out in the V-Jump and then soon after being released in the actual TCG. Now next up we have over here a new Starry Night card which is, I guess that's really great of course, but it is supposed to be coming out in a manga volume so that is definitely fantastic. So this is called Star Ring Night actually, uh, very interesting because it is a rank 4 light fairy XC's effect monster. I'm not entirely sure if this is related to the Starry Knights themselves. I assume that the name is implied but we're not entirely sure on that yet. It has 1900 attack and 1000 defense and requires two level four monsters, which is really nice of course, because that means it's generic enough to be able to be used in other decks out there. You can only use each effect among the first and second effects with this card's name only once per turn. First effect, you could detach one material from this card, special summon one light monster from your hand. You could use this already in Bujins, Satella Knights, Constellas, any kind of light deck that's actually available out there, so that's definitely nice. I'm already thinking, well what about the actual structure deck for the Agent deck? In that case, this card could actually benefit off that, so if this gets released around the same time as the Agent uh, structure deck, that would be really awesome. As for the second effect, if this card is in your graveyard, except the turn this card was sent there, you could target one level 4 light fairy monster you control, special summon this card, and if you do, attach the targeted monster to this card as materials. That's actually a really good effect. Being able to bring it back is definitely fantastic because keep in mind, if you do bring it back in some sort of way, perhaps you could go into a rank up magic and potentially go into some kind of high XEs monster. So it's not necessarily bad, not to mention the fact that its first effect is of course also a significant factor. So if you can bring this back with materials to be able to use the first effect, that's all great, you know? and. Seeing that the second effect can allow itself to recur, we could only assume that one copy is more than enough for any deck. However, let's now talk about the new Kyber cards, or the Kyber support cards. It's coming out as a part of a celebration for the 25th anniversary, just like the new Dark Magician card. However, the Kyber cards have actually been revealed. Now we have over here three trap cards. That makes sense. Kaiba is more of a person who utilizes trap cards anyway, given that he was playing Critias, which focuses on fusing that legendary dragon together with the trap cards. So the first card we have over here is called Attack Guidance Armor, a normal trap card. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. When a monster declares an attack, activate one of these effects. Either destroy the attacking monster or target one monster on the field other than the attacking monster and change the attack target to that target and enter damage calculation. Now what I like about attack guidance armor is that it's actually a card that was used in the anime and I distinctly remember this in the 4-way duel during the battle city where it was Kaiba, Marek, Joey and Yugi all going up against each other and I believe uh, attack guidance armor actually utilized this card effectively during that particular duel, so it was really cool to see that it's only just coming out right now in the TCG. However, the next card we have here is called Life Shaver or Shaved Life. 
Continuous trap cards, so that's very nice. You can only control one life shaver, so it seems to be a very significant card if that's the case. Second effect, once per turn during your opponent's end phase, place one counter on this card. Okay, a bit slow, but maybe the counters might be significant. Third effect, during the main or battle phase, if this card has any of its counters on it, you can send this card to the graveyard. Then your opponent discards as many cards from their hand as possible, up to the number of counters that were on this card. Wow, that's actually not bad at all. I mean, yes, this is very slow, but you have to keep in mind that what if you actually built this up? Your opponent would definitely be afraid. It's kind of like forcing your opponent to use their back row removal on this particular card. So it's almost as if it's a diversionary tactic and you're guaranteed to shave off at least one card off their hand anyway. So if you consider it in that particular sense, you could definitely benefit off that. If you also know that your opponent doesn't play any kind of back row removal, you could really benefit off this card because just in a few turns, you could definitely get rid of a lot of resources in your opponent's hand. It plays a certain psychological trap on your opponent as well because if you think about it on that particular level, your opponent's going to either be focused so hard on trying to get rid of this card before it actually goes off, and that way they're going to be distracted by their normal plays. Otherwise, they're going to try and mitigate this particular situation by emptying out all the cards from their hand. As a result, they don't have any more resources. So this card, although it's not necessarily the best card, it is something that in the long run can play a psychological effect that might be damaging to your opponent. And I definitely like cards that do that. Now as for the final card here, we have Mechanical Magic Mirror or Magical Trick Mirror. It's a normal trap card, and the first effect reads, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, target one spell in your opponent's graveyard, set that card to your field. Very nice, not bad at all. I mean, it's not the best card, but I mean, it's not the best effect, but hey, you get to take one of your opponent's spells. If it happens to be an extravagance or triple tactics, then I'm definitely all for it. Second effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard then send one monster reborn from your hand or from your face down field to the graveyard, special summon one Oblast the Tormentor from your graveyard in defense position. Wow, that was just so sudden. I mean, I didn't expect that whatsoever. The first effect was so random and it seemed almost lackluster, but the fact that the second effect directly allows you to summon out Oblast, that's pretty insane. If this effect is activated during your opponent's turn for the rest of this turn, while you control the special summon monster, each monster your opponent controls must attack if able. So that's definitely very nice. It kind of plays a similar part to attack guidance armor. In this case, you're forcing your opponent to attack obelisk, which is really insane. I love this card. I honestly didn't expect that whatsoever. And keep in mind, this is a normal trap card. You could easily play trap trick to speed this up. So with that being said, those were all the cards. I love it. I mean, I'm definitely really loving all of these Kyber cards here because you have to keep in mind with these Kyber cards, they're all so generic. They can actually be played in many kinds of ways. And seeing the final card, being able to summon out Obelisk is also going to be beneficial for the Egyptian God deck as well. So if you guys actually bought the structure decks, then you have this card to actually like think about, you know, it's definitely very fantastic. So it looks like the 25th anniversary is definitely looking up to be quite decent indeed. It's just a matter of what set it comes in and when it will actually come out. However, I would like to hear what you guys actually have to say about that, so do leave your comments. But with that being said, thanks for joining me today. I hope you all have an exquisite day. I'll see you all next time.